Hello everybody, this is Todd Burrows from uh, INC Home, Roku, and I am here with the lovely Tucky Williams in her home. Hello Todd. <laughs> and uh, we are here to talk about the uh, 10 year anniversary of uh, Dead Moon Rising. Uh, Tucky played the character of Vix, mm -hmm. and Dead Moon Rising was done by Anub Anubis Productions, directed by Mark Poole and his uh, lovely wife. Um, now, Tucky, we get Vix, and Jason Crow, who played the lead role of Jimmy, describes you as Vix. Every man's wet dream, that is, if your uh, taste runs toward an S&M castration fantasy. What's your thoughts on that, about Vix? Oh, she, Mark certainly wrote an amazing character. <laughs> I think I think Jim was joking when he said that. She is very um, serious, and um, she's not to be trifled with. I think that's what the Jim character meant when he said that. She's just not a woman you want to mess with. She'll call you on it. I, I noticed that she was good with, uh, let's see, guns. She was good with dynamite, explosives, and a few other odds and ends. Mm -hmm. And, so, and the, the samurai sword. And the samurai sword, yes. Mm -hmm. I know for the outtakes, you were pretty close to uh, cutting off Mark Poole's head. I, a few you times. told me that, I need to look at it again. Yeah. I haven't seen that in forever. <laughs> <laughs> All right, okay. Um, now, one thing that I was wondering about was apparently Vix meets Jimmy, or Jason Crow's character, in an insane asylum. Mm -hmm. What do you think was uh, Vix's reason for Your being there? Well, I worked out. Independently, my character's backstory, which uh -huh. was that she had seen some horrible atrocities in uh, while she was doing mission work in other countries, and I mean gruesome atrocities, absolutely the worst imaginable things. That's what she'd seen. Because we have a character who really does have a good heart and isn't a psychopath or a sociopath, and yet is doing these horrible, horrible things. And where does all that come from? And it's sort of that she's. But a good person who's witnessed something that she that no one would be able to process. This is her way of processing it. All of a sudden there's a zombie apocalypse and she becomes the perfect person and the savior. And there's a need for someone with exactly what's going on inside her head and she's very happy to be able to help in this capacity. So she, you have a really great gal who um, unfortunately is very efficient at killing people in a very gruesome manner. <laughs> because how do you make those two lines cross? How do you have a good person and someone who knows really horrible ways to slaughter other people? Okay, how do those two come together? Well, if they're a victim of something where they've seen horrible things, then that would be an intersection of those two. So, so there's a bit of Vix inside of you? Well, there's a bit of Vix inside of everybody. Yeah, oh. sure. <laughs> okay. Uh... All right, one of the best scenes, or most infamous scenes, is uh, you kissing April, Erica Goldsmith. Now, even with editing, that first kiss lasted 33 seconds. I timed it. Uh, with, a, with the second uh, kiss going about 15 seconds plus. Uh, how'd, that, how'd that go? How many takes did you do on that? We did a few takes on that. Uh -huh. We just... More than anything, we kept going until he said to cut. <laughs> I want to say about this, though, is that it was, like many things about this movie, it was the first time anyone had done it. So you may see it now and say, oh, that's been done before. But at the time, it was sort of shocking. <laughs> it was out on the mainstream, and it wasn't normal. A normal thing to see. It wasn't a normal thing to see in a movie. Yeah. Uh -huh. um, I guess... 
guess I didn't want to ruin it, but she was covered in blood and it was very sticky and there was the continuity issue and of course I had all my own clothes on and I wasn't going to ruin this stuff by having it stained with blood and then have to go back. These people were like, oh, blood just washes out of jeans. And I'm like, not costume. Like, if you're wearing a costume, you can't just, like, throw that in the washer. Like, I don't know what kind of movie you're making, but <laughs> in this movie, I'm taking my costume very seriously. I'm not putting stuff in a washing machine. Like, this costume is... I'm taking good care of it. We're not getting blood on it. And so, I'm, if you look at the scene, I'm kind of leaning over her. That's because I said, I'm not touching her. <laughs> I'll touch, I'll use my hands, but like no part of her body is going to touch me. When you watch the scene and you see that again, you'll see like her hands are frozen and she's frozen in place. So which one was the better kisser, Erica or uh, Jason? They're both very good kissers. I have a special friendship with Jason. <laughs> that comes more naturally to kiss Jason, I think. I think anybody who's kissed Jason. Male or female, or any orientation, or any <laughs> any anybody would uh, be comfortable kissing Jason Crow. <laughs> it's true. Yeah. I mean, he I'm just has that. that way about him. All right. Uh, I noticed uh, you also had a good fascination with uh, the motorcycle in the mm -hmm. uh, near the end of the scene. So, so do you ride a bike? No, and I didn't ride a bike in the movie, which came as a big surprise to everybody. <laughs> they faked it. I never got on a bike. That's what Hollywood does. It never, fakes, fakes, fakes. I never rode one. Never, I never got on one. Okay. That was one. Uh, I, was on, I sat on it in the store. That was it. Dead Moon Rising was Mark Poole's little uh, tribute to Louisville. Um, you know, so what do you think about when he started the um, creation of this film? Uh, do you think it would pan out? Do you think it would um, go on? Yeah, you know, we'll see it just how how it goes, or you'll never see this. In the, this will never see the light of day. I always believed in it. Uh -huh. I always knew Dead Moon Rising would be successful. I always knew it would be big. I always knew it would have a big impact. I think. I think at the time there were some people who didn't, and I always kind of looked at them like, you know, like, what's wrong with you? Like, <laughs> Mark was clearly on to something genius, and I'm very happy to have been a part of it. Did, did you mean like a specific period? No, no. Uh, no I always knew it was going to be a hit. Uh, okay. Because like I said, some people will thought, you know, here it is in the state of Kentucky and somebody's making a movie. You know, and it wasn't a Hollywood film, it was a local being done. And I know that you have also started making uh, your own material. Yeah. Uh, can you tell us a little bit about that? Well, after this, I did Girl, Girl, See. That was a little bit popular. Uh -huh. <laughs> I don't know, a little bit successful. And I have to say, I, it's like I came out of this and Jason came out of this. I can't speak for Jason, but I can speak for me. I really don't know what would have become of my life if I hadn't done Dead Moon Rising. I definitely used it to my advantage, and I used it... Girl, Girl scene came out of all the good things that came out of Dead Moon Rising. I know you... I've been on a few of your shoots, and you get a lot of support. I know. Yeah. Can you tell us, uh, I know you, your family helps you quite a bit. Um, <laughs> my mom and dad. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and like I said, your dad's a character. <laughs> yeah. I figure that's going to be me in another 30 years or so. <laughs> um, no, so tell us your process for the in, in the web. Um, do you think of your ideas? Do you do everything on the fly? Um, how do you go about creating your series? Oh, well, it starts with a great idea. And then I just write it. Ooh, in love with and this then girl. I make it happen. No way. <laughs> I don't know what else to say. That's where girl girl scene came from. Is I sat down and wrote it. And then with this new project, I'll say that the things that stand out about these two things are that they were things I fully, totally believed in, and they, they were things that I've been passionate about. 
uh, do you have any advice for the indie film crowd? Yeah, it's just to do it. <laughs> and I get a lot of letters in the mail saying, how do I get started? I mean, in, in email and I mean, all the different ways people can send me messages. A lot of people ask me, how, how do I start? And I'm like, start? And they were like, well, how did you start? You obviously had tens of thousands of dollars. I was like, no, I had no money. I just, I just started to start. And I didn't get mad. Just do it. Other thing is invest in sound. <laughs> Invest in sound equipment. Um, if you're a guy, learn how not to be a pervert. And if you'd like to know <laughs> if there are any guys out there who would like to get into filmmaking and would also like to know how not to come off as a creepy pervert, they can <laughs> they can message me and I'll I'll, uh, I'll give a list <laughs> of how not to be a creep. <laughs> All right, um, Did I split any infinitives there? How not to be a creep. I'll make that as a tutorial in my filmmaking school. How not to be a creepy filmmaker. Uh, all right. That's the best advice you're going to get. All right. Uh, uh, Don't creep out women. <laughs> like, if you do that, like, you're right. miles ahead. Uh... Back to Dead Moon. <laughs> um, yeah, back to Dead Moon. What was your best moment on the set? Uh, my best day was the day, because it was at night, it was an evening, and I think it was just Erica and me, or that's all I remember. It was, it was when they break into the bike shop at the end. We actually did that in the evening, right before sunset, and everybody was very relaxed and happy. It's a good day, uh, Erica and I and her husband... We all went out to dinner afterward. Got a cheeseburger. <laughs> it was so surreal because we were doing this movie and then like the most mundane things would happen like that. We'd shoot the come out and shoot this scene and then it was like, uh, okay, Erica and her husband, let's go let's go get a cheeseburger. It was like <laughs> uh, Is there a moment that you would during the <laughs> filming? Oh god. Um, is there anything that you wish you said, okay, I, I wish I could have done this better, uh, or I really didn't like this, I wish I could have done it this way instead, perhaps? I really like the movie. <laughs> I have to think about my performance. I know some people are self-critical you know, about themselves, but, you know, well, what I thought was pretty good. Thanks. Uh, I mean, there's these moments which your smile and that little chomping that you do, just like all those little the moments. Yeah. Yeah, that hurts. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, which I thought was some of really it brings out the character of Vix, just like the chomping. Oh god, uh, I chomped recently in front of, in front of somebody, and she was like, "Don't ever do that in front of me again." <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know anybody noticed my chomping. Yes. That was the little thing that informed the character. Because it gives them this little impish smile that you have. Yeah. That. And, and with the, the look in your eye just means, I'm going to give you such trouble that you're going to love it anyway. Thank you. The chomping was definitely not, not in the script. That was <laughs> But listen, was there would there be any moment in there would you say, okay, I, you know, I could have done this a little bit better? I think when that girl walks up out of the crowd and gets behind me, like we're gonna date or something, it just the biker girl. In the, in there's the something end? about that, and maybe it was just because I was there. There's something about that. It's like it it just i don't know it, it, we need to either not do that or do it more <laughs> All right. again that's something that you can apply to a lot of decisions in filmmaking you either need to have never done that or to have done more yeah jerry 180 huh 180 180 180 <laughs> is it okay yes it's okay, okay. All right. uh all right so do you think mix Vix made it through the uh, zombie apocalypse, a dead moon? She did. Mark will tell you that Vix survived. Okay. Yeah. So if Mark called and said, okay, I got, 
Got the funding ready for Dead Moon Rising 2. Are you I'm there? ready. All right. You heard that, Mark. It's, <laughs> yeah, all, I'm it's ready. on you. I'm ready for Dead Moon Rising 2. <laughs> all right. I think we'll bring this in. in so uh, Let me answer some questions. Okay. Just, oh, unless you want to do your... <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. I should say that this the Dead Moon Rising was it was one of the first movies of its kind. That this was before um, The Walking Dead. It was before zombies became a thing. That this movie was made. I really want people to put this movie in the context of the time period in which it was made, because it was so revolutionary True. to have a zombie horde that size. Oh Mark, yeah. Mark yeah, was no. the one who thought of that. Oh yeah, the big zombies versus bikers thing at the at the end he tried for a world record. Do you think he did he make it? I can't remember. In terms of world record, he did, but like the the Guinness people weren't there to verify it. So he, we didn't get the world record. But it, yes it was the biggest zombie scene ever filmed. <laughs> <laughs> and Mark really started a lot of this stuff, and I'm sure he gets mad when he sees stuff on TV because he probably says, "That's a line from my movie, or I started that." I mean, like you said, zombies versus bikers. Nobody had done that one before, and like now, how many times has it been done? There's so many elements of this movie where it was the first thing. Even the tone, like the zombie comedy tone, mm -hmm. that nobody was doing that kind of a horror comedy, but in that direction before. Nobody was doing it at that level, at that level of meta. Like, sure, you had um, uh, Evil Dead and stuff. You, have the, you know what I'm talking about, right? Uh -huh. That level of comedy. But this was a, a different, very 2000s kind of take on the zombie horror movie. <laughs> um, but, yeah, this... Mark deserves a lot of credit for being the first one to do these things. I tell Mark all the time that... Dead Moon Rising is one of my favorite movies. It has nothing to do with the fact that I was in it. It's just one of my favorite movies. Okay. Whether I was in it or not, I like it. Also, like, it, I hear maybe sometimes, and maybe, I don't know if I should say this, I hear a lot of times people say, oh yeah, given the low budget, it was great. And I want to say, given the low budget, it was great. I mean, that, that what? Like, Mark made an amazing film. Like, mm -hmm. What are you talking about? No matter what the budget, this is a great movie. And I've seen this movie so many times. I've been forced to watch it so many times because you go to the film festivals and it's playing. Or this was the first time I've had an experience of every time you go to someone's house, they're like, hey, we got your movie. Come watch it with us. And you're like, oh, I just did this last weekend. <laughs> and I don't, I don't show up until halfway through. So... <laughs> uh, so, so do you think... Okay, we got Dead Moon Rising in yeah. Louisville. Yeah. We got George Benilla in yeah. Zombie Planet here in Lexington. And, of course, Kirkman's um, Walking Dead started up in Harrison County, Cynthia. Do uh, you think it's something in the water that makes uh, the Kentuckians so crazy about zombies? Or? It makes us crazy. It makes us good horror movies. And it makes us fun. When have we not have fun on a movie talk? Well, okay. Except for the one we were just talking about. <laughs> but you weren't in that movie. <laughs> no, no, no. But when have we not had fun on a movie? So you gotta have fun on a movie. Yeah. Otherwise, it's just torture. I had fun on Dead Moon Rising. It was hard, though, because uh, we would start at 9 a.m. That was 9 a.m. in Louisville, and I had to drive myself and do all my hair and makeup. And that uh, doesn't sound hard. Until you're a girl, <laughs> and you're like, one time, I guess you've never glued on eyelashes, but I'm not very good at it. So one time I had to, I was in a dark stairwell, dark, like one light bulb, and um, I had to sit on the stairs and glue on eyelashes in a little tiny mirror compact, really, really early in the morning. Uh, <laughs> this was a difficult film to make. Really? For me. In terms of that, look, there was um, the place where we were most of the time. It was like 90 degrees, and they, <laughs> there was no air conditioning, and they had a gigantic fan. The place was filled with dust and sawdust. So 
Perfect. I, I couldn't sit near the fan because it was blowing dust up into my face and in the eyelashes. <laughs> and I had to stay out of it, I had to have my back to it. And uh, then if I would go do a take, like the, the, the samurai sword scene, like if I had to go do something like that, after two or three hours, I'd have to wipe off all my makeup, except for the eye makeup. I'd have to wipe, wipe it all off and put it back on because I was sweating that much. Oh, wow. And again, it was in this really shoddy mirror, this really terrible bathroom. I mean, seriously, it was like this mirror that, you know, mirrors get covered in black. That kind of, yeah, it was covered in that. So it's kind of having to look at myself in this mirror with no light. <laughs> Oh, so I take it that was not one of your better moments on the set. I came through. I did, I did, I did it every day. I put the, I wouldn't, that's one thing I've learned 10 years later is I'm not putting on my own eyelashes anymore. <laughs> Find somebody to do it. Yeah, yeah, a lot of people do not realize just how hard it is to make a, an indie film. It is uh, a lot of work just for maybe 15, 30 seconds on, on mm -hmm. tape. You're on, you've been on both ends of the camera, so which one do you prefer? Do you prefer doing the acting or doing the uh, directing? Um, I would rather just act and show up. Mm -hmm. Actors have the best job to show up and say your lines and pretend to be cold when it's hot, pretend to be hot when it's cold. That would be great just to have that job. Acting's really, really hard, so if I could focus on just one thing. I would do that. Uh, line producing is also very, very hard. <laughs> I wouldn't mind line producing. Uh -huh. Doing both at the same time is extraordinarily difficult. Acting and your line producing, it's like... That's <sighs> <laughs> a tough one. It's, uh, it's like, I think the hardest is when I'll have to do an emotion, a scene that, where there's a lot of emotion because it's like I'm telling everyone where to be and making sure everyone's happy and, and knows where they are and that they're comfortable and uh, that everything's running smoothly and that we're on schedule and then it's like okay now you have to be crying because she's dead and so it's like I'll be like okay guys I'm gonna give me five minutes I'll be right back so I'll go away for my five minutes and like I'll listen and it's like dead quiet out there like everybody's just waiting for me to come out and so you're like oh, okay 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 so then yeah. Maybe it works. You can I, judge. I did watch that moment where the, you were had, had to be very uh, sorrowful oh, that uh, thing. over somebody. But, I've gotten used to it now. <laughs> now I can do it. And you know, there you are crying over someone's dead body and a phone rings. Yeah. So you had to momentarily break character. That was terrible. Because <laughs> the phone wasn't being turned off. <laughs> it just kept ringing and ringing and ringing, and I was like, I'll wait it out, but it actually didn't stop, right? You, you were there. So I very politely asked, whoever this is, could you please turn the phone off, all right? I was polite. And did we say who it was? No. <laughs> all right. It was well, someone who we'll meant keep... well. It was someone who meant well. All right, we'll keep a secret. All right. Uh, okay, uh, let's see. Would you, anything you want to say? Anything else you want to say out there? I want to say that Mark did this amazing thing because he got this group of people together, a group of strangers, and he made us all believe in ourselves. He made us all believe that we could be better people and that we were capable of doing great things. All right. That's good. <laughs> <laughs> I like that Jerry just turned and was like... <laughs> all right. So, like I said, this is uh, Todd Burroughs for the INC channel. Uh, here with the lovely Tucky Williams, and uh, we hope to see you soon on uh, watching Dead Moon Rising on the INC. So, good night, and have a good night. Uh -huh.